How the hell they neighbor we know? Okay, so we got a little bit of news today. First story of the night is all about how HTC and Oculus Vive are both seeing different strategies for the road ahead. Okay, so Oculus is going more for the consumer approach and HTC for the for the uh, commercial approach. As could clearly be seen by the upcoming Quest and the currently existing HTC Vive Focus, Focus Plus, and you know, like half of their life. Everything except the Rift. No. Yeah, ev everything except the basic Vive model is going to be astronomically expensive. So, that being the case, I don't know about you, but I'm personally of the mind that it's easier to sell a thousand rocks for a dollar than it is to sell one for a thousand. You know what I mean? Uh, that being said, because they're going at opposite ends of the spectrum, it's hard to tell what's going to happen as far as their role in the upcoming market. So, yeah. But, personally, I believe that Oculus, led by F Facebook, of course, is, is going to be the leading man in this play. So, yeah. Let's go on to the next story. The next story of the night is about a toolkit that is going to make all of our virtual reality dreams, well, a reality. It's called VRTK, or the Virtual Reality Toolkit. If you guys have not heard of it before, that's okay. It's been relatively slow. And this one, however, was in production between April of 2016 and early last year, with version 4 just hitting beta. So... Problem was, this this entire system, uh, how shall I put this, it didn't work too well. Tons of negativity and, well, it like I said, just didn't work out too well. However, thankfully, this version 4 is going to be a re rewrite and it is completely hardware agnostic, meaning that you will be able to ap apply this system using Unreal, using the open source Unreal Development Kit to develop your own virtual reality games, which can then be ported to the Vive, Rift, or the PlayStation VR, maybe. As a result, that will end up giving all of us plenty more, at least, decent quality games. Depending on how much time is invested into those, into the production quality of each of those, may give us not just decent, but actually good quality games. So, they do in fact have a Patreon that you can link to, or that you can support. That link will be in the description down below. So as some of you may remember, when the Xbox One launched back in 2013, it was hit with quite a big bit of backlash because it was trying to go streaming only. And this was the case largely because not everybody has good internet service. Best example of that I can give is how my girlfriend recently switched from Charter, or the, she switched from CenturyLink over to Spectrum, and as a result, her internet speed went through the roof. Obviously, this is not an ad for for Spectrum or whatever as not everybody has the same strength or customer service or whatever the deal is. Problem is that, or rather the news, 
is all about how Microsoft is trying to lean more towards a streaming-based console system. They have, in fact, tried to do a little bit of balance and course correction since then by offering one of each as far as a streaming only and a disc supported option. Obviously that disc supported option is going to be better for those that have, well, horrible internet connection. But then again, what can we expect from Project Scarlet, huh? They said that one's supposed to be better than the PlayStation 5. And if there's anything we can go on, it's the fact that Microsoft and Xbox are trying to push even more to become a single unified system. And I don't know about you, but that to me, that says that we may get Windows Mixed Reality on the next Xbox. Although he said we... Although Phil Spencer personally said at the last E3 2018 that Xbox itself would not launch a virtual reality system, that does not rule out the idea that Windows Mixed Reality will be ported over to the, to the Xbox in some fashion. And this actually seems to be the case as well as one of the bigger things that, that Phil wants is to, to bring forth all the games that you can play on your Xbox over to Windows or, heck, even the PlayStation 4 or the Switch, depending on whether or not he's actually able to get his way. So do keep an eye out for that. Those plans are expected to be discussed at the next E3 here in June on the 11th, 2019. So, yeah. Next up, we got details of the PlayStation 4 and Xbox game releases. So, for PlayStation and, well, I guess Xbox 2, the game I am looking forward to is Mortal Kombat 11. You can expect gameplay of that on Tuesday, assuming that you don't have the money to get it yourself. You can find it on, on the other game channel on Tuesday. We also have a chair in a room, green water. Try to scare yourself silly. We got Day D through time. That one's supposed to come out on Wednesday the 24th. We got Days Gone, of course. That one comes out on Friday the 26th. That way you can, you can try to avoid all the zombies you'd like. But do so, but you can't do so until like, Thursday, if you pre-ordered a physical copy from GameStop, by the way. So, yeah. Friday or Thursday or whatever for Days Gone. We got Jupiter and Mars coming out on Tuesday. Not on Tuesday, but on Monday. That one's coming out on Monday for the PlayStation VR. And finally, we got the Zeropchian Invasion. Don't know what it's about, and frankly speaking, I don't really care that much. I know I shouldn't say that, but it's the truth, so. Mm. And for the Xbox, what we have is Unknown Fate and Zeruptian Invasion on Wednesday. And of course, Ugly Dolls and Imperfect Adventure on Friday. Once again, honestly, I can't really tell you that I care about that one. I'm going to be spending most of my time on Mortal Kombat 11 on the PS4. So, yeah. believe that about does it for tonight's video. If you guys liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm a horrible human being for giving you all this news. Toss off for now.